Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Aditya from Sony. Uh, today I will be talking about uh, advanced XIP file system, that is the XFS. So the agenda for today will be, we will be looking into the XFS overview, profiling feature, its implementation, and uh, about its performance. So just to give you a background about this talk, we recently pushed AXFS into 3.4 LTSI tree. So we think that AXFS is more powerful than its counterparts like CAMFS and SquashFS in many aspects. We think that AXFS deserves more wider usage than it currently has. So in this talk, I'm going to give you some insight into AXFS so that more people can start playing with it and uh, maybe include it in their products, and we can make it even better. So about embedded systems. So uh, as we know, the cost, power, and size, and other constraints in embedded system make uh, for the root file system compressed and read-only as an ideal choice. So commonly used uh, file system in embedded systems like CRAMFS and SquashFS are also read-only and they support compression. Compression and read-only are basically very important in an embedded system. SquashFS supports compression of files in the file system and uh, CRAMFS supports compression as well as XIP. CRAMFS supports execute in place at a file granularity. Uh, that is, either the file can be an execute in place or it can be a compressed file. XFS is a read-only file system which supports execute in place for page granularity. That's the main point about XFS. So each page can either, in a file, each page can either be compressed or it can be an XIP page. So we'll start with the introduction of uh, what XIP is, what we mean by XIP. We'll look into the advantages and disadvantages of XIP approach. We'll look into XFS file system image format, and we'll take a short dive into XFS source code. So what do we mean by XIP is, XIP means execute in place. So wherever the, uh, the file system image is, we basically directly execute from that place. So it's only possible in a memory mappable device which are byte addressable, such as uh, NOR, ROM, and RAM, system RAM. So for XIP to be practical, it's very important that the speed of the device should be comparable to the system RAM for it to be practical. So what happens is the process virtual memory is directly made to map to the physical address of the, uh, the XIP media on which the image is there. So we don't need to uh, load the code pages into, from the media into the page cache in the system RAM. So basically this uh, diagram summarizes what XIP is. Uh, so when we have a executable in the file system image, uh, in, if we don't do it the XIP way, then basically we load the code and the data to the system RAM, and then that uh, pages are mapped into the address space of the process. The XIP way of doing thing is that we load the data, of course, but as for the code pages, executable pages, we directly map from the file system image, from the media. So there are some advantages that XIP gives us. XIP reduces the boot time and the launch of the launch time of the application. It is so XIP is faster because uh, uh, it does not load pages into the memory from the secondary from the secondary memory that saves a lot of time the second thing is that it reduces cost 
So it reduces the requirement for system RAM. It frees up system RAM. We can use it for some other purpose. Uh, on the other hand, we can include less RAM into products. It reduces power consumption because uh, less energy needs to be spent on uh, uh, refreshing the bits and the RAMs. And it helps reduce cost. XIP also has some disadvantages. One that stands out is that XIP is not suitable for pages which are hot spots in the system because generally the NOR flash is slower than the system RAM. So we really cannot put pages which are accessed in a loop, in a tight loop or, or basically are very critical for performance. So we, those type of code do not uh, 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 go with XIP way. And yes. Uh, yes, it would be cached. But if we have cache eviction, then in that case, again, it has to be fetched from north. So uh, usually, uh, I mean, if it's a very tight loop, then yes, it will always be accessed from cache. But if it is like uh, not a very tight loop, but something in an um, intermediate, then yes, there are uh, chances that it will get evicted and you again have to fetch it from the north. So uh, those kind of uh, things are not generally suitable with uh, the north. Yeah, 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 thank you. So X, AXFS is basically a 64-bit file system. That's very important because uh, that differentiates it from uh, CRAMFS and SquashFS. CRAMFS has uh, size limitations, as we know. It is a big Indian, and it's a read-only file system. Uh, and as I told you, it allows XIP at a page granularity, and that's uh, very important. Uh, and it supports compression in uh, sizes of 4 KB to 4 till 4 GB. And it can directly mount from an MTT device. So uh, the main point of AXF, the main uh, advantage of AXFS is that the AXFS image can be split into multiple devices. So uh, this, uh, so uh, this allows the XIP part of the image to be put on the NOR flash and uh, the non-XIP, the compressed part, on the NAND flash. So what happens is that if we can split the images into two uh, devices, then uh, we can only have that much NOR uh, as the number of uh, XIP pages we want in the system. And the uh, uh, compressed pages can go into NAND, which is, of course, much more cheaper than NOR. So uh, this device spanning, though, is only possible if the first device, that is a NOR or ROM or whatever, is memory mappable. So, uh, so if, if, if the first part is XIP, then only this device spanning is possible. It's not possible in the reverse way that uh, the starting of the image is NAND and the later part is NOR. This feature, as I told, helps in making the products more economical. And uh, as we can see, the uh, AXFS can uh, directly uh, go interact with the MTD layer, or it can uh, go through the block layer. So what is AXFS profiling? So basically, AXFS profiling is uh, how we decide which pages should be XIP and which pages should be compressed. Uh, that's very important for uh, uh, from system performance point of view. So uh, how do we go about AXFS pro profiling? So uh, basically, the overall thing is that we typically uh, we run the applications the general applications, the typical applications, and their use case uh, with the non-XIP XFS image. And uh, we take the log of the pages which, are, which uh, turn out to be uh, executable during that profiling run. And that data we take and we feed it into the second step of building the image. So the image builder takes that log and uh, takes the directory, of course, and gives us the XIP XIP image. 
So uh, this is a little detail of uh, uh, how we go about it. We uh, we build the image, the normal image. Uh, we take a directory and it gives us the output image. Then we run the typical application test cases. And then when we have the profiling data with us, we feed that into the image builder and uh, and we get an output image. So as I said, XFS profiling gives us the pages that needs that should be XIP. So uh, profiling to be effective should basically cover all the important uh, aspects, all the important use cases of the application. So XFS for this purpose contains an inbuilt profiler. Uh, we can turn that on by a config option in the kernel. So after the profiling, we have a log which is fed into the image builder. Okay. So now XFS is a 64-bit file system and yet it can have a very compact uh, file system image. So how is that possible? So basically AXFS byte tables is a scheme of things which makes, uh, the, which makes AXFS have very low overhead for supporting 64-bit offsets. So what uh, uh, byte tables is that uh, each byte table, first of all, byte table is a sequence of bytes. So each byte table entry contains only that many number of bytes that are required to hold the maximum number of the, uh, the value that we are going to hold. Say, for instance, if we are going to hold an offset, then the maximum value of the offset, uh, we can only have, we can have the only that many number of bytes which can hold the maximum value of the offsets. So the number of the bytes in a table, in an entry of the table, is called the depth of the byte table. So let's say we need to store uh, less than 256, uh, uh, a number of magnitude of less than 256, then we can have a byte table of depth only one. So in one byte, we can represent, of course, all the, is from 0 to 255 of the value. And say, for example, we need to store um, a number which is which has a maximum of 500. Then we need a byte table of depth two. So, as I said, byte table scheme is the key scheme which allows AXFS to have 64-bit offsets in a file and still be uh, pretty light. So following is the code snippet which uh, basically sums up how the AXFS uh, file system driver uses uh, byte tables. Here we basically give the, uh, the, the depth of the byte table, we give the virtual address where the table is stored and the index into the table. And as we can see it does a sort of a pretty simple calculation and gives us the output of the, uh, the, byte, the value of the entry of the byte table. So of course the AXFS driver uh, code sub only, uh, only, has, uh, only deals with 64-bit numbers. So in the AXFS code we have 64-bit numbers and in image, image format we in, the, in the AXFS image we have byte tables. So uh, this is the format of the AXFS image. So we have super block, we have uh, what we call as region descriptors, and then we have a, a list of region, the contiguous regions. So a region is a, is a contiguous segment in a file system, in an AXFS file system image. Region descriptors are the descriptors for that contiguous segment of uh, file system image. Basically, they store the location of the, uh, the uh, segment and some of its attributes. The attributes stored include the size of the region, uh, whether the region is compressed or whether it is XIP. And also, if the region contains byte table, then it contains the byte table depth.
so uh, following is the uh, on media representation of the uh, the uh, region descriptor the region in the uh, xfs image so we see we have uh, offset which uh, describes where the region in the xfs image is located at the size the compressed size and so forth So, what are regions? Basically, region con regions contain data as well as metadata. Basically, they contain anything that file system holds. So, uh, most of the regions which contain metadata, they contain metadata in form of byte tables. Regions which contain actual data are XIP regions, compressed region, and byte align region so xip and compressed region contains the xip pages and the compressed pages respectively byte align region contains a special type of data that is the data which does not compress properly so if we don't get a good compression or maybe even get a negative compression then we do not uh, compress those data we keep them as it is and they are kept in byte aligned region. So we have three types of region, XIP, compressed, and byte aligned. So uh, within a region, the data is stored in uh, chunks of, uh, chunks called nodes. So these nodes are usually four kilobytes in size. These are basically uh, the pages from the files the data the pages from the files if it is an xip it will be as it is if it is compressed then of course it will have uh, uh, two three blocks of uh, uh, data compressed together and nodes in the region have types so either they are xip compressed or byte aligned this is a uh, uh, a super block structure for AXFS. We have various offsets uh, stored. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, few of the regions in uh, AXFS images. In AXFS image, so we have uh, we have string image, string regions, node index region, node type region, inode array region. So a string region, strings region basically contains the names of the files. And basically it is the only metadata that is not in form of a byte table. The offset within the strings region for a file name is pointed to by inode name offset region. The inode array index region contains the offset of uh, offset into node index region for each of the file. So basically, a uh, node index region contain uh, po has the index into actual data, and inode array index points to the uh, sorry to the node index region. So uh, following are uh, uh, the functions which. Uh, access these regions from the file system image. So as we can see, it takes a super block and the index of the inode. Uh, so here, as we can see, it gets the uh, offset from the inode name region. And uh, this contains the virtual address of the in the memory where the strings region is there. It adds and returns us the, the string. So, uh, so we we have node type region and node index region. So this is basically how do we get the data out of the, uh, the how do we interpret how do we how the file system driver gets the data from the image. So node type region basically contains the uh, type of the node that uh, that it is pointing to, and node index region points to the uh, the index of the node. So basically, index is uh, index into one of the data nodes. 
and the type determines what type it is. So for example, index of an XIP type of node is just the page offset into the XIP region, into the compressed, into the XIP region. And index for byte aligned type of node is an offset into a byte table of region which contains the actual offset into the byte aligned region. So it's a double uh, pointer. So index into compressed type of node is a little uh, complicated. Uh, it basically, the, the index for a compressed type of node basically is, is an index into two separate type of regions. One type of, uh, so one region is C block offset region and another region is C node offset region. So uh, what is uh, C block and C node is basically, so C block is the compressed, uh, is the compressed block of data. So how is C block prepared is that we have various, and, and C node is the uncompressed uh, data. So we have various uh, X number of uh, C nodes, we compress them and that becomes the C block. So basically C block is a compressed version of concatenated C nodes. We can put it that way. So uh, when we uncompress the C blocks, we get basically uh, the uh, uh, concatenated C nodes. So basically the index into a compressed region has an index into C block which is taken out from the image, it is uncompressed and then the index into the C node that we had is utilized to find which C node in the C block is our data. So this is just a snippet of code that uh, does the, that implements uh, this uh, two index, uh, so this index into two different nodes and gets the data. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the AXFS performance. So we measured AXFS performance on following hardware. Uh, it's known as uh, Navi Engine Board. It has an NEC uh, SOC. Uh, CPU is ARM v6. Uh, it has four cores. We used uh, 20 MB of memory. It has 32 KB of uh, L1 cache, I cache, and D cache. It does not have an L2 cache. We used a 3.0 kernel for performance measurement. And uh, we had 64 bit of NOR flash. And 4.5.1 uh, is the GCC that we used. And the file system image was mounted on the NOR flash. So basically, these are the performance parameters that we covered in our performance of uh, testing, performance evaluation of XFS. We measured the application launch time, the application boot time, basically. And uh, second parameter was we uh, measured uh, total uh, uh, flash used by the memory, uh, total flash used by the file system image, which is basically the size of the file system image itself. And uh, third parameter, performance parameter was the, uh, the footprint, RAM footprint of the, ex the file system. So before going into performance numbers, uh, we, also, uh, we also thought about some other ways to improve uh, uh, the AXFS uh, performance. So one of the techniques that we uh, played around with was uh, uh, following is the technique that we used. So uh, we used it in combination with AXFS. So uh, the technique was basically about improving the code locality of the program. So basically, the uh, what we did was we uh, we implemented a tool which uh, records the calling order of the functions in a program, 
and then the tool generates a linker script which basically places those functions together and in that order uh, so that it gives us a better performance. So improving the locality of the code gives us less number of page faults and, uh, and basically the less number of page faults is very important because uh, when, it, when the code faults in an uh, in a uh, file system uh, f such as AXFS, so we have to fetch the page from NOR flash, which is a little bit costly. So uh, this really helps uh, improving the uh, number of page faults in the system. So basically, it improves the application speed and uh, reduces the RAM total RAM that will be used when the application is running. Basically, the the RAM footprint. So uh, this is the uh, description of the tool that we implemented. Basically a simple tool that, uh, so if you have any uh, uh, application, we just uh, compile it with the instrumentation option of the GCC. So uh, the application is run, and uh, we have a tool implemented which attaches to the application. It, it wraps the function calls and basically spits out a log of uh, the order of the calling of the functions. This order of calling of the functions log is then given as an input to uh, a linker script generator script. Uh, so uh, this script gives us a linker script and uh, so now we can rebuild the application and uh, now basically the application will run faster. Okay, so coming back to the AXFS performance uh, thing. So uh, basically the application that we use to uh, measure the performance is our basically dummy application. Uh, uh, it basically simulates large number of uh, page loading during the launch, uh, during the launch of the application. So to give you details, uh, we had around 500 functions called in pseudo random number order. So basically, as you would know, pseudo random numbers are numbers which are which are produced in same sequence if we give the same initial seed. So uh, so each function had around uh, 1600 bytes of size. Mostly they were knobs and a few memory access instructions. And this. Uh, uh, application we used it uh, because of some constraint we used it as an uh, init process of the system. So uh, we measured timing by basically embedding the calls to record the value of the clock uh, at particular given position in the program. So uh, calls were embedded just before the kernel spawns the init process and uh, just after executing 500 functions. And we measure the difference between the clock time between the two calls as a performance measurement. So uh, basically the uh, measurement goes like this, that uh, currently we will have uh, uh, four Im file system images one is the AXFS, uh, which is without the AXIP profile pass, a plain AXFS compressed image. We'll have an AXFS XIP image, which is uh, generated after, as I uh, explained, uh, after getting the profile data and uh, feeding it back into the image builder. Then, we'll, then we have the uh, code locality improved program on top of the compressed XFS image, and finally we have code locality improved program on top of XFS XIP image. So uh, here, so in this measurement, we measured the application launch times. So application launch time basically is a difference between uh, the uh, just before launching the init process and just after finishing those. Uh, pseudo functions, 500 pseudo functions. 
and uh, so we just measure the time of the uh, time duration it takes to launch the application for all the four uh, images so basically this is the uh, numbers for uh, the launch of the application as we can see the compressed axfs takes the largest amount of time the locality locality improved axfs takes little less and as we can see the benefit of uh, uh, xip that it takes the least amount of time though locality improved uh, axfs and uh, the normal xip axfs are almost uh, same uh, have the same performance number so basically this shows us the uh, the improvement uh, that uh, xip gives us in terms of the application launch times next measurement that we did was uh, for uh, the total size of the xfs image the total size uh, that it takes to store the the images again we have uh, four images we have the compressed uh, so we have um, four images we have xfs compressed image we have xfs xip image uh, and uh, the other two locality improved on top of xfs compressed and xfs xip and uh, the measurement is basically the total size of the file system image so as we see the in this uh, parameter in this dimension the Uh, compressed xfs fares the best um, it uh, uh, as it is supposed to because it is compressed so xip gives us a little uh, uh, larger image and then the locality improved images the third performance parameter that we tested was uh, system ram footprint again we have four same images and uh, so uh, what we mean by system ram footprint so the actual definition of system ram footprint is the total size uh, to total uh, memory used when the application used by the application uh, when it is running we however here mean a little different uh, we mean it different when we say a system ram footprint w what we mean is that uh, the total ram used in the total system when the application is running and not just by the application but all of the ram used by the uh, by the system when the application is running that includes the all of the memories so basically we measure the total memory used in the system while running our application so uh, it's fair as uh, our application is the only process that is created in the system during that time uh, so it, since it's the only process so it's a fair measurement so uh, as we see the total memory used is uh, the total uh, Uh, ram footprint is lowest for uh, the xip xfs and uh, it's a uh, little more for compressed xfs image so key point of xfs is that it allows xip at page granularity uh, though it requires a profiling pass and uh, another important thing that xfs gives is it can span multiple device we can use it over the mtd layer and uh, basically so suit mostly suitable for uh, codes that are uh, uh, boot time that are launch uh, for uh, which are launch intensive uh, not very suitable for uh, 
participants in the system. Any questions? 